Hi, welcome to our Character for Absolute Beginner series. In this series of videos, I'm going to be teaching you Python programming, starting from the very beginning. If you happen to be a newbie and you are yet to even write your first line of code, I got you. This is the perfect series for you. I am Dr. Ewanya Obed, currently studying software engineering after taking my Doctor of Pharmacy degree. I believe that a number of people out there are looking for it to transition into a career in tech and that is why they are learning programming. This channel of mine will help you, guide you to mastering some of these programming languages so that you'll be able to transition into tech as you wish. So if you enjoy something of this sort or you are looking forward to a lot of these sort of content, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Also, leave comments when you don't understand anything. As I said, this series is supposed to be beginner friendly. So I'm going to start from the very uh, basis. What is programming? So let's get into it. What is programming? Or what is a programming language? A lot of you have heard this word, programming, coding, programming language. Today I'm going to demystify it for you. So programming languages are basically languages that you write to give instructions to a computer. If you want a computer to do anything at all, you just have to write a programming language for the computer to understand and execute those instructions you want them to execute. Fortunately for you and I, we are able to speak in a language that I will call human language. And that is why when I give you instructions right now, like, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. You know exactly what to do. And by subscribing, clicking the button, you know, yeah, you know how to do that. So if I wanted a computer to do a similar thing, I wouldn't just say, hey, subscribe to the channel. The computer doesn't understand that because that is human language. I will need to speak in a language that a computer understands. And what is that language? I have to write a programming language. Even though that makes sense, but the truth of the matter is that even with the programming languages that we are going to be learning, for example, with Python, the computer actually does not understand your Python that you write. There has to be some form of translation from that language into a language that a computer understands. So, what we call programming language is the language that humans it helps us communicate to the computers, but that is not the very language that the computer understands. The computer understands what we call machine language and basically made up of zeros and ones. So, at the end of the day, the programming language that you are going to write, or whichever language you are using, the code that you are going to write, will be converted into zeros and ones that a computer understands. So the question is, who is responsible for converting this uh, the language that you are writing to service and ones? But before I answer that question, you need to understand is that there are different types of programming languages. And depending on how far away they are from the actual machine language, we can classify the programming languages into low-level programming languages and high-level programming languages. Some languages kind of sit in between there and you may want to consider them as middle-level programming languages. But let's take a look at low-level programming languages and high-level programming languages. An example of a low-level programming language is C programming. And C basically, or a low-level programming language, what it means is that it is so close to the computer language that uh, you, the human, find it difficult to understand. Whilst when you take the high-level programming language on the other hand, it is so close to your own language that it becomes so easy for you to understand. So Python is an example of a high-level programming language. For that matter, it is so close to your English that just by reading a Python code, by seeing it, you may be able to tell us what it is supposed to be doing, even if you have never programmed before. So that's the difference. The low level is so close to the computer language that it becomes difficult for humans to learn. And in fact, when you are using a low-level programming language, there are a lot of manual things that you need to do. Those of you who have ever learned C programming will understand that. But then when you come to the programming, the high-level programming language, there is a lot of abstraction. A lot of things have been hidden from you. You don't have to do the manual ones. So this is like an automatic car, a, a manual car comparison sort of. So the higher level language is the automatic one that you are using where you don't have to consider changing gears and things, but then 
In the manual one, which will be the lower programming language, you have to do all of that. So if both of these are not machine language, or they are not machine codes, and we humans cannot write machine codes, how then do we get our computer to understand everything that we write in this language? So as I said earlier, there has to be some form of translation. But this, there are two major ways that these translations are done, depending on the type of programming language you are using. So I'm going to use an analogy here, kindly pay attention. If you currently are writing a letter to me, assuming I don't understand your language, you probably write a letter in the language that you understand. Then you get someone to convert the whole letter into a, the language that I will understand. Or better still, you go online and use Google Translate to translate the language into a language that I understand. Then I will also read it to understand to go ahead and execute the instructions that you have given me. So that is one way that we can go about our programming. We we'll write the whole code, the whole program that we want to write, a set of instructions. We we'll write everything in our language. Then we would ask some program or software somewhere to do the conversion translation to the language that the computer understands. And that process is known as compilation. So we we'll get a software that is called a compiler to compile the code into machine language so that the computer will now understand. That is one of the ways that we can get the programming languages that we write or the codes that we write to a form that our computer can understand. The second way is to use what we call an integrator. So as I'm speaking right now, if you happen not to understand English, whatever language you understand, if I am supposed to get you to understand what I'm teaching right now, I can pick an integrator who would integrate everything that I say into the language you understand. So in that case, the integrator is going to integrate to you every single sentence that I make. It's not going to wait for me to finish everything that I'm going to say in this video before it comes and converts them. No. As I say them, they will come and interpret it for you. So that's how the interpreter also works. So with an interpreter, your line of codes are integrated per line and executed. So the interpreter, the computer now understands that all oh, this is what you meant, then it's executed. So the various programming languages that you come across, you can talk about Python, Java, PHP, JavaScript, and many more others, are going to be classified into these two uh, types. That is, whether they are a compiled language or they are an integrated language. And as I've explained, a compiled language, you write all your code, then a compiler will compile, or will convert or translate everything into machine code before the race running of the program itself. So your program won't run until every aspect of the code has been translated into machine code. That is compilation. But on the other hand, those that are the interpreted language would be interpreted line by line. So your computer or your program is going to be executed or run line by line. And each line would be converted into machine code the computer will execute it before you get onto the next one. So that is basically what a programming language is and I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you did, give the lesson a thumbs up and also if you are yet to subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the channel for more of such videos. So I stay tuned for the rest of the series because we are now going to get into the meat of Python programming. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.